We did this last year. We're going to roll it out again. We're going to do our Super Bowl odds draft. So it's based on the Super mm-hmm. Bowl odds right now over at BetMGM. Uh, so Paul's going to jump in. So there'll be four of us. We'll get end up with three picks each. Uh, the odds, and it's it's based on, it's not just for this weekend. This is for the Super Bowl, right? So the bye teams, obviously, Eagles, Chiefs would be, um, I would think, pretty pretty good selections if you make those because they're near the top of the odds to win this whole thing. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here and take – Tom Brady and the Bucks oh, at twenty five to one. I was reading some interesting, uh, just silly trends and stuff. I went down a path of like when you get the one seed, how often does that team win the Super Bowl? And interesting enough, four seeds go on to win the Super Bowl quite often. Um, they have in uh, history. So uh, yeah, exactly, Paul. I know, I know where you're going with that. So I'll go, I'll go with the Bucks, twenty-five to one. Again, this is value and who I think might have a chance to win. You can come up with an idea of what you think the path is going to be, but as we know, they recede, so things can get thrown off here. I'm just trying to figure out what I believe the path is going to be, and I believe that Tampa Bay, if or if it's Dallas, they're it's going to, they're going to be facing Philly. And I think that's a really advantageous spot. And at worst, where's their toughest matchup? Maybe a, a rookie quarterback in the conference title game. Philly is fourth on the odds board now at most spots. I see plus 550. And that's got to be the best number that we've seen on them in months. Uh, I'm taking the fraudulent Philadelphia Eagles. And part of it is because I want Joe G to hang around as long as possible. I have to go Buffalo. I'm going to go Buffalo, 4-1. to okay. one. Uh, Look, they're a preseason favorite. They're not the favorite now. I think they're in an advantageous spot because of the rule change last week. They're going to get a neutral site title game, not to go to Kansas City. And I think they're better on turf anyway in a dome. I'm going to go Buffalo, 4-1. to one. And I think we uh, we get them beating Kansas City in a neutral site AFC championship game. The bottom of the board outside of our Jaguars, complete yeah. thrown out. Dolphins, Giants, Seahawks, like in the trash. Oh, get out. Um, well, we're going to have to draft them, but yeah. One of them. <laughs> yeah, we're only, what, four times three? So we can leave two. We can leave two out of there. Um, Jags, obviously, I would consider. Vikings, that's another one I'm just going to throw out at 30 to 1. Um, I just have no interest. I just don't okay. believe in them. So okay. I, I have to take the Niners at five to one. I don't know how yeah. I pass on them in this spot. So, and I think something interesting that we're talk that we will talk about in our futures discussion later in the show. Lot like that is a team where you can look at a nine quarterback long shot for Super Bowl MVP. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. So Niners at five to one. I guess I will take. The Jets. I'll take the Jets. You guess. You have to. For the <laughs> we all guess. For the bit. Yeah, we knew it. I don't love their defense, but I'm getting Patrick Mahomes with the sixth pick in the draft. Wow. The Kansas City Chiefs at plus three at, at three twenty-five. So I will take the Chiefs. Son of a. <laughs> I will take the Chiefs and the Bills as my first two picks here. This is a team that I thought after two picks that Joe G would have definitely taken, right? And you know, the more I think about it is uh, we talked about the idea. My first reaction was Jacksonville winning the game against the Chargers. But would I take Jacksonville? Do they have that ceiling to take down Patrick Mahomes at Arrowhead? I don't think so. I think the Chargers, if they win this weekend, do. I think Herbert can do that. He can at least hang with them. So 25 to 1, I see. Yeah, 25 to 1. But MGM's the best number on the board. Give me the Chargers. Tough road, Jacksonville, probably Kansas City, and then, you know, maybe Buffalo, Cincinnati on the other side. Um, going with the Bolts, even though I hate Staley. So who do I even have left? So the, uh, the best <laughs> odds left on the board, you have the Cincinnati Vikings. at plus 750, Cowboys at 14-1, to 1, Vikings at 30-1. to 1. Those are the three. Two Cowboys. Uh, okay. Shortest I'm, Cowboys. No, I'm going, I'm going Bengals. <laughs> It's got to be the Bengals. That's a great pick. Yeah. I mean, the eighth so Bengals and Bucks so far. All right, Lamar, please play. We're going Ravens at 40 to 1. Lamar, you better get out there, buddy. I'm going to go with, I think it's obvious here. Yes. Let's go to the Fraud Bowl. Which team is going to win the Fraud Bowl? 
Well, give me the Vikings. They can do it for an entire season. I'm stealing Kirk Cousins from Joe G. Give me the Vikings. All right, yeah. that, that means I have to take a team I hate here. It means I, I'm locked into a team I hate. I have to take Dallas. I, I mean, I, what, what a choice do I have? I have Dallas, Miami, the Giants, or the Seahawks. I'm going to take Dallas here. They get a team with a negative point differential in the first round that stunk all year. And here's the reality. And we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about this for two weeks. Until Jalen Hurts plays like himself and we see him take a hit on his shoulder and it's fine, that's going to be the back of everyone's mind when that game is played. So, And Dallas just beat the Eagles a few weeks ago. I mean, do I think it's going to happen? No, but a 14-1, to 1, I will take the Cowboys as my third pick. All right, so Dolphins, Giants, Seahawks. I think numbers-wise, <laughs> I would take the Seahawks, but I'm guaranteeing a loss between the Niners and the Seahawks, so I will pass. I don't know that Geno can't make a run. There's like three negatives in that segment, in that sentence, but I think the Seahawks, mm-hmm. I don't know that they're dead. I don't know that they're dead against a rookie quarterback facing them for the third time with Pete chewing his gum up and down the sideline. And you've always got the Kyle Shanahan can't hold a fourth quarter lead factor, as I know first <laughs> from last year's NFC title game. But if Tua played, wow, the Dolph, I like I heard what you guys were saying yesterday about that line being eight or so if he plays. I I would be all over the Dolphins more than a touchdown if Tua is in there. 